Okay, now to round out the sensor programming for all of the recess sensors that are available with the Lynx Touch panels or any Honeywell wireless system, we have here this is a 5800 RPS wireless rolling or roller plunger switch. Unlike most of the other door and window sensors that we've shown you, which use a sensor with a magnet and it detects when the door is open because the magnet's pulled away, this is a plunger style contact. When the plunger is popped out, that means the zone is open. And if you're disarmed, you would have a fault. If you're armed, you'd have an alarm. When the door or the window is closed, it pushes the sensor down or the plunger switch down and closes the, the, or keeps the circuit closed um, so that the zone is happy and that you would be ready to arm and you would not have an alarm state. As soon as the door opens, the switch pops out and the zone is activated. So this 5800 RPS is a one single device. There's not a magnet with a contact. The contact with the plunger is everything. Where the door and the windows that are surface mount and using the magnet are normally mounted on the opposite side of the hinge, uh, meaning the move, the, the, so when you open your door, um, you have your hinge side and your opening side. The ones with the contact and the magnet go on that side. With the plunger style, you want to install this on the hinge side. So as soon as the door opens, the side of the door that would hold this down pops open and the switch pops open. So you get a better indication of when the door is open. You don't have to have the, the door opened all the way for it to pop out. As soon as the door closes, it pushes it back down and you're ready to go. There is a spring, as you can see, as soon as you let go, it pops out. So there is a spring on this device. So long term, this kind of sensor could potentially fail uh, before the style that uses the reed switch with the magnet because that's not a movable piece. There's less likely for this to fail over time uh, or less likely for the other style to fail over time, more likely for this style to fail over time. The last thing you would want to have happen is when your door pops open that the switch still is held down and therefore the door opening would not be indicated. So. You know, it is Honeywell, it is a good sensor. It's of course covered under warranty and we expect this to work for many, many, many years. But you know, over a 10, 20 year period, this type of sensor may not hold up as long as another one. However, there are certain times where this is better. First of all, if you're looking along the edge of the frame to see the sensor, you're not gonna see this style as much because it's on the hinge side, better protected, better hidden. So someone casing the, 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 the property for a break in later, they may not even see that the door is protected with this kind of sensor. Uh, because it's recessed and hidden in the frame, you get a very discreet look. And therefore, this is a good option. And uh, as long as you're handy enough to install it, obviously it requires a little more work than just slapping up a surface mount sensor, the 5800 RPS is a great option. Just like with the 5800 Micra, at the back end, you have this little plastic end cap, which you slide back. You have your battery connector, and it comes with the battery. This one is a CR1620 as well, 3-volt lithium. You have your positive side of your battery, and on the actual battery connector, you have your positive indicator, and therefore, you slide in the battery positive side up, and align it so it's centered because you can slide it off to the left or off to the right. You want it to be as centered as you can be. And then you simply snap down your end cap so it keeps it nice and snug and the battery's not gonna fall out. Now when you install this into the hinge side frame, you wanna make sure that you drill enough so that you have a depth of this device. And further than that, you wanna make sure you have a hole going through any framing studs so that this antenna, this plastic, well, the antenna's on the inside of this plastic, but you want this elongated or stretched fully out so that you have your best range back to, your, back to the panel. If you bunch this up in the wall to fit it in into your cavity, that's gonna greatly reduce your wireless signal strength and you're not gonna expect to get as much range back to the panel. So again, you wanna have this fully extended when you install it. 
and then that's how you use your RPS. They do give you this little plastic straw so that you can slide this down into the antenna. Uh, taking this sticker off will let you put it all the way through. And then that would prevent the antenna from getting bunched up. Um, so you have a little bit more um, rigid, rigid uh, casing to keep the antenna in line where it should be. So now that we know how this device works and when you would use it, we're gonna show you how to program the 5800 RPS to an L7000 Lynx Touch panel. Just like with any sensor, first thing we do, security. We're not doing Z-Wave automation, we're not doing video, we're doing a security sensor, so we go into security. From there, it's more to bring up the option for tools. Once we do tools, we have our keypad here and we're gonna type in our installer code, 4112, that's the default installer code, we have not changed it, so it matches the code that's referenced in the install guide. And then from there, we go to program. On the program page, you have a lot of options. For this uh, instance, we're gonna use the zone option. And while we can jump down and do the next available new zone, 11 or 12, we're actually gonna jump into four, which you can see is default, but just set with a window. That was out of the box, a template zone. Once we set, select it to new, everything's defaulted except for the loop number is still set to two, but we'll address that in a second. But, but to program it, serial number. You cannot type the serial number until you select that box. And once you select that box, you either key in the serial number, which is displayed on this Honeywell sticker here. You have an A for alpha followed by a seven digit number, okay? Or the better and easier way to do it, you activate the sensor three times. With our 5800 Micra, that meant moving the magnet away, putting it back. On the 5811, same idea, magnet and contact separate, that activates. With this one, we simply push the button in, door closes, door opens once you let go of the button and it pops out. That's activation number one, we heard the beep. Close the door again and open it. That's beep number two. We can line it up and see that our serial number matches 0497350. The panel auto detected the serial number and more importantly, the proper loop number because this was a template zone designed for a 5816. We used to have it set to loop two. As soon as we do our third activation, it pops out with the proper serial number in the proper loop, which is loop number one. All right, so the last thing we have to do is select our device type. We're gonna put this on a door, all right? We have a master bedroom patio door. Because it's a master bedroom, decor is more important. We like the recess style. And we're just gonna further clarify that beyond just being a door, we're gonna call it a master bedroom. So master machine. obviously starts with the letter M. We have machine, so we can use our down arrow. Mage. And this will scroll through and display and speak each word Maintenance. that starts with M-A in alphabetical order master. until we get to master. Now we could put this for zone descriptor one and we could put the word bedroom for zone descriptor two or if we go one more time, master bedroom. we get both words in one slot and that allows us to put a second descriptor. So instead of just master bedroom door, we're gonna go into descriptor two Painting. We're going to hit the word or the letter P. Now we're to the P words. Panic. We're going to hit the down arrow until we get to patio. Patio. Now we're done. And when this zone is activated or faulted, it will literally say master bedroom patio door. We get a nice clear description of the zone that was triggered. For the master bedroom, that is not a door that we're going to use when it's armed. We're not going to enter the property through that door and we're not gonna ever exit the property through that door when we arm the system. So it defaults to entry exit one for any door, but we always select perimeter for a door that is not used when it's armed. That way it's more secure. When the door is activated on a perimeter zone type, the alarm goes off immediately, no delay at all. So you really should only have entry exit one set for doors that are used when the system is armed. All right, the master bedroom patio should only be opened in the disarm state, and therefore we want perimeter. 
Alarm report is yes. That means when this alarm is activated, we want it to send the signal to the central station. We have chimes set to standard. In the, be in the bedroom, we'd actually, we'd actually prefer the unique melody chime tone so that we know that the master door was open instead of the front door, which is set to the standard chime. And supervised, of course, we want that to say yes in case this sensor's too far from the panel. If it was ever not seen, every 12 hours the panel checks for every device that's programmed. It knows what serial numbers are learned into it and it will look and say, are you there for every device? If this device doesn't check in, it will throw up a supervision fault and you'll know that this device probably needs a repeater to get the signal back to the panel or something perhaps has hurt this sensor so it's no longer transmitting. A supervision problem means this panel is not seeing this sensor. So we want to have it supervised, otherwise those kinds of occurrences would not generate any trouble and, and that would be bad because if someone broke in this door, it wouldn't do anything and you wouldn't know that. So this supervision makes your panel more secure. We save it to lock in the settings and we exit to the home screen. And then finally, just like we've done with every program sensor, we verify it works before we install it. So we close it by pushing in the button. That would indicate the door is closed, pushing tight to the hinge side of the door frame and the sensor is active or rather uh, closed up and ready. Same idea as if the magnet was close to the sensor on a 5811 or a 5816. As soon as you open the door, the door moves away from the hinge side. The sensor pops out. You get, your audible, Radio, you, get, you get your audible chime and you get your audible voice indication of which zone was faulted. That way if you're downstairs and you hear that, hey, what's going on up in the master bedroom, you can go check it out. So a chime is a nice feature and the chime and the faulting of the device verifies, verifies that we have our zone programmed master properly. Bedroom. Patio, door. So that is the programming of a 5800 RPS wireless plunger style contact for the ELF 7000 Lynx Touch panel.